Hello everyone, this is Madhusudin Raj, your host. I am in front of you again to discuss one very important update on the demonetization exercise that the Narendra Modi government started last November in 2016. So as we all remember, <clears throat> on the evening of 8th of November, the present Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, came on the national television and announced suddenly that uh, from that night onwards, from 12 o'clock midnight onwards, all the 500 and 1000 rupees note, which amounted to around 87% of the total circulating money supply in the economy at that time, will be no longer valid legal tender and it will just become a worthless piece of paper. So now uh, here we are, it's been 10 months since that exercise started in 8th of November and we have the ground results of that exercise in front of you. So I am here again today to discuss those results. Uh, if you remember, I, I also analyzed that demonetization exercise on the very evening when it was announced, that is uh, on 8th of November 9th. And at that time I said that uh, this uh, exercise, this demonetization exercise is going to uh, be very detrimental and very dangerous for the Indian economy. Uh, in future the economic growth of Indian economy is going to decline, unemployment is going to rise. And today as I said it's 10 months and we have the results. So let us begin with uh, revisiting the major objectives of that policy that Narendra Modi announced on that night and which also were uh, written uh, articulated in the communique that was sent by the Ministry of Finance. Those goals were majority three goals. The first goal was to uh, fight the problem of terrorism via the curbing of the fake currency that was circulating in the economy. So the Modi government uh, argued that it was uh, because all the fake currencies of 500 and 1000 rupees note that were circulating in the economy that uh, that currency was being used by the terrorists to fund their activities, to buy weapons and everything and that is the reason why uh, the monetization exercise of cancelling all the 87% of money supply of that time was needed. Anyway, uh, immediately after the exercise started I told you that the fake currency of even new newly printed uh, 2000 rupees notes started circulating in the market and uh, in last 10 months uh, there is no uh, curb on the uh, fake currency notes at all. Uh, in fact as I said the fake currency notes of 2000 rupees is already out in the market and many people are getting duped because of that. In the hurry of printing the notes RBI itself was printing uh, uh, defected you know, notes of 500 and 2000 rupees. So that whole uh, exercise of uh, routing out to, you know, fake currency notes from the economy failed at that time itself. Not only that, the whole exercise of uh, controlling or eliminating terrorism by attacking the phenomena of fake currency has also failed as we can see from the daily occurrences of uh, militants attacks in the Kashmir region as well as in the many areas of Northeast, for example, the Assam. Uh, uh, since the time Modi government came to power, in fact, the attack on the security personnel has increased by, according to you know some reports, increased by 72%. Last year itself, around 150 security personnel were killed by the terrorists in Kashmir region itself. As I say, the every day you open the newspaper and uh, you will find the news that one or two or eight or nine or ten security persons were being killed in the militant attack in Kashmir region itself. So if you compare last three years of the UPA government and the first three years of the Modi government, the attack by the terrorists on the security personnel has gone up significantly. So obviously even after the demonetization exercise start, was started in uh, November, after that in the year 2017 itself around, you know, as I said, 150 attacks have taken place. So the demonetization exercise and the whole attack on the fake currency note to curb the problem of terrorism has basically failed. Not only that, uh, the other uh, reason being articulated and argued by the Modi government at, th at that time and by Mr. Narendra Modi himself on television was uh, to you know uh, come very heavily on the phenomena of black money. 
So what happened? So the Modi government was expecting that uh, lakhs of crores of rupees of fake currency, uh, sorry, uh, black money that was circulating in the underground economy at that time will never come back into the banking system again because of the demonetization exercise. So that, that is the thing that the government was expecting. They were also expecting that uh, this uh, money is which is not going to return into the banking system, which is not going to return into the IB, RBI's vault, uh, will be basically a windfall gain for the RBI because RBI, I, RBI will not have to kind of uh, repay that. So uh, that that particular windfall gain, what the government calls dividend, government was expecting that RBI would basically transfer into the government's account and and those lakhs of crores of rupees, then the Modi government can go and supposedly uh, spend on uh, the uh, welfare of poor people. So how how did that uh, uh, objective came about? Uh, now, uh, a couple of weeks back, the RBI uh, came out with its annual report and in that annual report, RBI said that uh, almost 99% of all the circulating uh, money supply at the time of demonetization. That means the notes of 500 and uh, 1000 rupees has come back into the system. So RBI has accounted for around 99% of all the money supply. That means Indians basically returned all the 500 and 1000 rupees note into the RBI's wall. That, that means that there was no black money to begin with. Or whatever black money was there was was converted by these people into white money by using the excuse of demonetization. So demonetization exercise instead of curbing the so-called menace of black money actually helped these people, these so-called corrupted people into converting their black money into white money by using the legal means. So now to save the face, uh, the finance minister Arun Jaitley is saying that whatever money has come back into the system, now we know you know, you know whose this money is and we are going to, the income tax department is going to kind of crack down on them. But as I said, these are all face-saving exercises and excuses. If at all there was any kind of black money circulating into the system, it should have never come back into the system. But RBI is saying that they have not finished counting all the notes and whatever month, whatever notes they have counted, 99% of the money supply has already come back. So they are saying that there is more money lying into the RBI's world and that means that 100% of the money supply has come back and it is quite possible that the amount will uh, kind of shoot over 100% and that will be very embarrassing for the government because that will show that RBI itself doesn't know that how much total money supply is basically circulating into, into the economy. But anyway, so uh, the whole exercise of demonetization about curbing uh, the black money phenomena has also failed. Uh, corruption is still with us. In fact, every now and then we, we see and we hear the cases where the babus, the government bureaucrats are caught you know, asking for bribe and there is no let down into you know, the corruption phenomena. The black money itself has kind of disappeared or the people were able to convert that black money into the white money by using the legal means of the monetization. Uh, terrorism is still with us. So both the uh, stated goals of the demonetization exercise has now failed as the data itself is revealing the results are in front of us and the monetization exercise has turned out to be a total disaster also for the Indian economy. As I said in the beginning of this analysis that on the eve of 8th November, I said that the economy will suffer badly, unemployment will spike, and that is what is happening. So recently the uh, Central Statistic uh, Organization, she also came, came out with the GDP number for the first quarter of, uh, last quarter, first quarter of the 2017, and uh, they are saying that the, the last quarter, uh, it was not the first quarter, it was the last quarter. They are saying that the last quarter, the GDP growth rate in the Indian economy, of the Indian economy has come down from 7.1% to 5.7%. And this GDP growth rate of 5.7% is, is uh, so far the lowest in the Modi government. And this is the lowest 
a GDP print in last three years time period since the Modi government came to power. So this is nothing, but as I said, the economy has suffered pretty badly, not only because of demonetization, but also the haphazard implementation of the very complex rules of goods and service tax in last July. So after the you know double whammy of demonetization and GST, obviously the Indian economy is struggling pretty badly, and and that is what reflects into this low GDP print you know of 5.7 percent in the last quarter. So why is this happening? This is happening because it was pretty much expected. Uh, we all have to understand that the market economy, the private sector businesses, they survive and thrive in uh, in a stable condition you know people, one thing the business people don't like is uncertainty because the job of entrepreneur is to deal with the uncertain future and they will like to minimize that uncertainty as much as possible and they also like to see the uh, policy regime what what we call the uh, regime uh, very very stable that means they want stable rules they want uh, secure property rights for their for their businesses uh, and if they are going to find out that the uncertainty in future is rising, if they are going to find out that the policies are changing every now and then, if they are going to find out the rules are changing every now and then, like what is happening under demonetization or under GST, if they don't uh, understand what the rules are for the you know compliance, like GST is a very complex you know tax code, uh, nobody knows what is going on in my city Surat itself. Lacks of you know businesses are unable to you know, file their return because the income tax or the GST department's servers are failing them. Many of the people are not even able to register themselves. A lot of corruption has taken place in that itself. You know, I heard from many of uh, business people that uh, many people, many agencies are asking for a very hefty fees like 60,000 rupees, 70,000 rupees just for registering the names of these people's businesses in GST server. So these kind of uncertainty, this kind of regime uncertainty is very, 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 very detrimental for doing any kind of business. Because as I say, business people like stability. And in an uncertain environment, there is no wonder that these business people are going to stop whatever investment planning they have in present as well as for future. They are not going to invest any new money. They are not going to start any new venture because they don't know whether they are going to make profit or not. Because uh, today there is one tax code, tomorrow there is another. Today the government is saying that, you know, uh, 105,000 uh, rupees and 500 rupees note is you know, not legal. Tomorrow they will come and say that now 500 rupees note that they are newly printing, where that is also not legal. Or 2,000 rupees note that is not legal, they are going to bring that out of circulation. They have now introduced 200 rupees new note. So we, we don't know what the Modi government is going to do next. And these and into these kind of environment, it is very, very difficult for businesses to survive. So when GST was coming, so many people started de-stocking also. They started selling, you know, whatever, you know, inventories they had. This is all premature because it was never into their plan. It was never profitable for them. It was only because the government was haphazardly implementing GST. Many rules are still not clear. People don't know whether they are going to get credit or not. So basically, in this kind of uncertain environment, doing business in India is very dangerous. And then the government is also becoming almost like anti-rich. The government is you know, almost saying, sending the message uh, as if uh, being rich in this country in India is a crime. So if you have money which is not approved, you know, money more than the income that is not being approved by the government, which is obviously very arbitrary standard, then they will say, they will always question that how did you make this money and the income tax department is going to come after you. So there is a, there is a whole atmosphere of fear amongst people. Nobody wants to you know, carry you know, you know, uh, any kind of big money with them. So making profit, they have now under GST anti-profiteering laws also. So that if you are making profit by not, not passing on the you know, uh, low prices to the customer, then the income tax department will come after you or the GST tax department will come after you. So it is very difficult to do a, you know, kind of any kind of uh, business into this kind of environment. So ultimately, these problems have brought down the Indian economy. And now we, now we know that the former RBI governor 
Dr. Raghuram Rajan also warned the Modi government about the dangers of the monetization. He said very categorically into the new book that he is coming out with. He said that I was not on board about the monetization with the government. And when he was asked his opinion, he orally said that the short term cost of the monetization will far, far, far exceed the any long term benefits. And and that's the reason why the, the Modi government went after him and they forced him to resign from his position. They never allowed Dr. Raghuram Rajan to finish his two terms, you know, as a as a RBI government. So Rajan also warned them, but Narendra Modi did not listen to him. Uh, he did not listen to anyone. He's not listening to anyone even today. Immediately after these figures came, GDP figures came, the and the uh, reports came that 99% of all the notes came back into the system. Uh, what did the finance minister Arun Jaitley said? He said that the demoralizing exercise was successful. He changed the goal itself. He said that the goal was never to curb the black money or to curb the terrorism or to curb the you know minus of fake currency, but but the goal was to go cashless. Again, even economy is not becoming cashless. The use of cash is you know. Uh, increasing and not only that it has again achieved the levels of pre-demonetization years. So now they are saying that it was never about black money, it was always about making the Indian economy digital. So now the new mantra is digitization, digitization of the economy. And, and obviously that is not true, originally they never talked about that. So they are just changing the story, they are just uh, not ready to accept their failures. Uh, about the falling GDP number, he only said that oh, this is just worrisome, but nothing to worry about in the next quarter. As usual, the number will jump again. Yeah, the GDP number will jump again because uh, there is very little room left to go down. The only room now left is to go up. When the economy is going to achieve 0% growth, growth rate, the only way it is going to go is up. But that doesn't mean that there is any kind of achievement of the Narendra Modi government. The economy was so low that the only way it is going to go is up, right? But anyway, so they are basically not ready to accept their failures. That means they are not going to change the course. They are just going to continue with uh, with whatever policies they have in their mind. They don't care for the economy. Modi is, you know, I'm sure uh, inside very worried about it, that. And, and that's the reason why he had uh, a, a replacement of his cabinet and he is changing. But... That is not going to help. If you are going to continue with the same kind of economic, faulty economic policies, we are going to continue to have the same kind of, you know, bad consequences of those policies. It is never about what kind of minister the government is going to appoint for this particular uh, portfolio and that particular portfolio. It is always about what kind of economic policies you are following. And I can guarantee you that as long as you are not going to follow the right kind of policy, no government can you know, make the economy bad. It is, in fact, none of their job, as I always say. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to stop here today. I just wanted to make this uh, quick uh, analysis of the results of the demonetization policy. And as I said, uh, the demonetization has turned out to be a total disaster for the Indian economy. And as long as Narendra Modi is just going to implement his uh, whimsical, you know, ideas, He's going to experiment with those ideas with the Indian economy. As long as he's going to give one shock after another shock to the Indian economy, the Indian economy is going to be into shambles. The Indian economy is going to be ruined. And uh, we should basically prepare for more and more of these kind of disasters because I do not think so Narendra Modi will stop at anything unless and until he gets a big defeat into any kind of state elections that are coming up. And I see very little chance of that happening. So that means we have to buckle up for the tough time that is ahead. Demonetization was the disaster. Thank you very much for watching me. I'll come back to you soon again. Bye-bye.